Hey, what's happening, YouTubers? Back with a brand new action figure review. And today we're going to take a look at the Hasbro Thor Love and Thunder, Thor and Mighty Thor 6-inch deluxe figures. Now, in case anyone's wondering, I did pick this up at my local Walmart. And unlike the Marvel Legends, these weren't street dated. I believe the street dates for the Marvel Legends versions aren't going to be until April 26th, I think. I think you could pre-order it that day, and I think it'll be available to sell at local stores. I think they're also going to be available in stock, to be honest with you all. Just like the Shang-Chi figures last year, like when everyone was seeing them and they got street dated, I think they'll be available for purchase on the day of. And like I mentioned, these are 6-inch deluxe action figures, and they're not really much deluxe action figures. They're more so like gimmick stuff, like you can see like axe swing or hammer spins you basically squeeze their leg and they have some sort of gimmick it's kind of the same thing we've seen before like with the shang chi figures they had one for him and his father wen wu and just like we always do with action figure reviews here on the channel we're gonna get started with the box art first i'm just gonna go over both of them at the same time so on the top left hand corner you see the image of thor and mighty thor aka jane foster thor and then on the right hand side of the top you see the thor love and thunder logo you see the images of the action figures and you see axe swings and hammer spins you see their names on the bottom and then if we look in carefully here you see it says the plastic free packaging this is probably what's going to happen with the marvel legends as you all saw the announcements on uh I think it was Fan First Tuesday. You saw the announcements that most Marvel Legends going forward now are going to be windowless, so no plastic at all on the boxes. I have conflicting opinions about that, but that's a discussion for another time. Then on the side of the box, you see them with their gimmicks here. I don't think the action figure is going to look as nice as this. Uh, these are just render arts. And then, of course, it says again here, emphasizing these are plastic-free packaging except tape and glue. And then on the back, it shows you exactly how to do like their gimmick. You basically just squeeze their leg and you see the action go. Or should I say the gimmick, whatever the hell it is. All right, that's enough about the box art. Right, let's go ahead and get started with Thor first. And the interesting thing is you can kind of hear, it's got like the tissue paper in there like they do with the Fortnite figures. Like when you shake it around, you can hear there's like packaging in there now. So it's no longer going to have the clamshell like you've seen before on Marvel Legends or basic figures. And just to show you all, this is how it looks. Now when you take it out of the package, that's literally just the figure wrapped up with this paper. All right, now let's take a look at the Thor figure, and we'll get started with that head sculpt. And to be honest, I'm not a fan of this look for Thor. Like, I get it. Some people will tell me, oh, it was what we saw in the comics, or it's an homage to the comics. I get it. I wasn't a fan of that either. But I got to say, when it comes to the head sculpt of this quote-unquote deluxe figure, basic figure, pretty much, it doesn't look that bad. You know, the gold paint application, the gold accents looks actually pretty good. The sculpting of the helmet's not bad, especially the way they sculpted the hair too. It looks pretty good. I'm just not a fan of the look. And it's funny when I'm looking at the shoulder designs, like it's so blocky, it's like insane. Like I'm expecting Marvel Legends quality, but I need to reset my expectations because it's been a while since I reviewed a basic figure and I didn't think it would look anything close to what we saw on the box art because it's pretty much just concept art. But, you know, it's not bad for a basic figure. Now I will say this though, price point wise for $15.95, I think I paid, no, it's not worth it. <laughs> now we'll take a look at the rest of the figure. It doesn't look bad. That blue just really stands out. I'm wondering if this is a case of just they use the wrong shade of blue, not just on the figure, but on the concept art, because I'm wondering if in the movie it's going to be much darker than this, because this just is insane. <laughs> like It's like a bright blue Power Ranger with Asgardian armor. But I will give credit where credit's due. I like the gold accents on the chain armor. It looks really nice. Other than that, the cape looks okay too. It's just funny to see like these blocky shoulder pads. Now what you all been waiting for is the gimmick. This is how it is. Basically you squeeze his leg together and... <laughs> there it is. That's cool. A thing I noticed though is on the Stormbreaker, it looks like they're still using the concept art Stormbreaker. And the reason why I know this is because the original Stormbreaker that came with the Hasbro Marvel Legends Thor and the Infinity War basic figure Thor was using this style uh, and the style of the Stormbreaker. So that's concept art. How it's actually supposed to look is like this. So it's pretty wild to see. They're probably just reusing parts from maybe the basic figure, which is understandable. Now I'm gonna go into articulation, even though it's really just like three or four points. The head does move from side to side actually. It can't really go up and down, but side to side, it's okay. And then, of course, this arm goes up and down because of the little gimmick there. And on here, it can do the same thing. Nice thing, though, it's pretty interesting. There's a little swivel, like a little, uh, a little cut right there, so you can actually move the wrists around. That's pretty interesting. Now, there isn't any articulation on the legs apart from this thing just sliding. 
when you squeeze the legs. What's interesting, though, is there is a cut on his right leg, and I was wondering if it was a thigh swivel, but now it's just molded on like that. <laughs> All right, now let's take a look at Mighty Thor next. All right, here is Mighty Thor out of the box, and let's take a look at the head sculpt first. And yeesh, that looks nothing like Natalie Portman. But again, this is just a basic figure. It still looks nice, though. Don't get me wrong. I like the sculpting and the detail on the helmet. You can see the silver paint application looks nice. You see her hair right there. It doesn't look bad. It actually looks pretty good. It's just that doesn't look like Natalie Portman. Now, we'll take a look at the actual figure itself. It doesn't look bad for a basic figure. I'm not going to call this a deluxe figure because it really isn't. But for, like, a basic figure, it doesn't look bad. The sculpting looks kind of nice on the suit. It does look like how she looked in the comics when she was Lady Thor, um, but I guess in the movie she's going to be known as Mighty Thor. I mean, I like the the silver accents and the application right there. The helmet looks great. The sculpting on her gauntlet looks nice as well, and there's like the hammer gimmick. Uh, but she does have nice articulation, uh, just like Thor. Her arms can go up and down. There is a wrist movement right there, so it like swivels. And of course, the legs, there's no swivel on there, but there is that little gimmick where you just and that's another thing. This just looks stupid. Check this out. So if you squeeze it, her arm doesn't move anywhere. It's just blocked by the cape, I think, by default. <laughs> it's just supposed to do that. So what am I supposed to just do this with a cape? Just even then, it's just... <laughs> All right, let's reset it and let's move the cape out of the way and see what happens. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Nice gimmick there. <laughs> let's try it one more time. But I will, I will give credit where credit's due. They're, they added the swivel on the wrist so you can move the hammer around. And speaking of the hammer, when you look at Mjolnir, there is details on it. Like, it's damaged, and you can see it's been broken before, so that's pretty cool. I, I gotta give credit where credit's due on that sculpting, so it's not bad. It's just this gimmick is very skewed. Just <laughs> Try it again. Oh, it stopped. Let me try it. Hold on. Sorry, y'all. I'm having a little fun with this. It's it's interesting. I I wish they would have just foregone the whole gimmick of like doing that and just add just the normal cut like they did with their basic figures. But it is what it is. These are meant for kids, like most action figures. All right, so here's Thor and Mighty Thor standing side by side. And it's kind of funny to see Mighty Thor is as tall as Thor. So the scaling's not even right. But again, they're just like these gimmick toys. So it is what it is. All right, now we're going to jump right into size comparisons. And first size comparison here, they are sitting next to a couple basic figures. These were Hasbro's Hero Vision basic figures, I believe. They came out during the time of Infinity War. And I think these figures are more meant to be in scale with these than Marvel Legends. And I say that because here they are sitting next to some Marvel Legends figures. We have the Marvel Legends Thor from Dark World and the Marvel Legends Odin from Infinity Saga. And compared to them, they just look like Happy Meal toys. Here they are sitting next to the Marvel Legends Stan Lee. Also... I did move the arm up a little bit, and so now that stupid swinging hammer gimmick works. <laughs> no? There we go. <laughs> Come on, it worked a few minutes ago. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, because that looks natural, right? Fuck it. Oh, I also did notice that there is actually rotation on his gauntlet. So you can move Thor's gauntlet like this so you can aim Stormbreaker any way you want, which is pretty cool. All right, some overall thoughts on these figures are whatever. <laughs> Honestly, they're okay. They're great for kids, you know, for the gimmicks and stuff like that, but not at the $16 price point, which is what I paid for these figures. I fully expect these figures to go on clearance, to be honest with you, just like the Spider-Man one and just like the Shang-Chi ones did. Now, I do understand the price hike on this just strictly from the sculpting and the paint application because when comparing these figures to the Spider-Man No Way Home ones and the Shang-Chi ones, these have more intricate details and sculpting than those do, in my opinion. And also, I think there was a Valkyrie one I saw at the store, but I didn't pick it up. Now, I'm kind of wishing I did just to complete this. Because to be honest, I like the box art. If, if anything, I don't really care so much for the figures. It's a nice gimmick and all. I'm going to try and do some toy photography with them. 
try to being the operative word, <laughs> but the box art looks nice. Not for 16 bucks though. So whenever it does go on clearance, I might pick up another one, but I think they're okay for what they are. Just, I don't agree with the price point of it being 16 bucks. If it was at 10 to $12 price point, yeah, right on. But anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments below YouTubers. What do you think about these figures? Are you going to be picking it up? And like I mentioned, these aren't street dated. So if you see them and you want to take a gamble on some McDonald's toys, feel free to. But to, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, YouTubers. And like always, if you like what you see, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead, subscribe. Thanks for watching.